All praises to Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai Bahashim Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom, salutations to the hopeful elect that's fighting the good fight of faith. And I'm not even going to read this scripture as you see it's on here, but I want to talk about it, right? Because if you are a person that only been to church one time, no times, you always hear this. You hear it in movies. You hear it as a saying because it's true. So, and we're coming into the ultimate selling your soul. See, this is dealing with riches and comfort in this life. And as you know, that's what celebrities do. People in the, in, in the, in the government do, you know, talking about our people. The Israelites, so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans. But, um, yeah, the ultimate selling your soul is that microchip, man. Revelation 13 and 16, which I'm going to get. But you're, you're about to ultimately sell your soul if you take it. It's no way around it. So you're dealing with the most high where he's not... A person that's in the middle is either yes or no. It's no middle ground. And you got people out here that's actually talking about, well, if I put it in my left hand or if I put it or if I put it in, uh, in my right hand, but I cut it out or I put it in any other body part. No, if you get the chip. That's your ass, man. And people are playing games. See, I look at it like this. I really don't even have to talk about it. Because, you know, my um, teachers, the apostles and elders on down, they've been talking about this. So you click on any video, they'll talk about this. But I just want to give my little input on it. So, the book of Revelations was written thousand years ago, right? People say about 2,000, maybe even 1,500 years ago. So, you're seeing this coming to pass. Number one, that should tell you right there, like, oh shit. I'm talking about if you had any doubt. Your faith was lacking. People who, you know, that was on the fence and not sure. Now you actually see this coming to pass and you're going to actually take it. So it already showing you that it's true, that the most high is true. So that means what he say is going to happen. So let's read about. What would happen if you take this, man? Because, see, this is the ultimate selling your soul. This is the ultimate, I don't want nothing to do with the Most High and His Son. I want Esau to be my God. Do you understand what kind of slap in the face that is? Because when you're dealing with the Most High and His Son, the Most High's name, Yahweh, and His Son's name, Yahweh Shai, when you're dealing with them, right? He created the man that you about to literally give your soul to. He's the one that's giving him his thoughts and his actions. Because a man's going is of the Lord. How can any man understand his own way? That's scripture. So if the, if the so-called white man, Esau Edom, is the most high sword, and you're going to sell your soul into something that the most I have control of, man. Do you understand how stupid this shit is? And, you know, people don't like my mouth. It's a potty mouth because you got to understand. The Bible say in Ecclesiastes 7 and 7, surely oppression makes a wise man mad. It didn't say happy. It didn't say, oh, you know, he in between. He kind of happy. Any kind of mad, no mad. But this shit is stupid. 
Just stupid. And it's vexation of the spirit. But let's get it, though. It say, Revelation 9, Revelation 14, 9 and 10. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark, which telling you right there, that's a physical mark, not a spiritual mark, a physical mark, something that's going to be put inside you. And receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the Most High, which is poured out without mixture. That means that judgment is just, <laughs> like I said, it's poured out without mixture. So that means that a lot of shit is going to be, you know, the it's concoct. <laughs> it's concoct together, man. You're going to get that fire brimstone. That's that's a heavy ass judgment right there, man, because the Bible say in, in Revelation 9 and 6 that it's going to be people who was trying to flee for death. But, but I'm, 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 I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. I'm going to read this again. The same shall drink of the wine and the wrath of the most high, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone and in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb, man. So people think that you're about to just, OK, I'm going to get burnt up. I'm going to die. I'm going to be burnt up for a couple of minutes. And I'm going to die. No, no. Most high have a cover. Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai have a cover. Let's prove it. So it said, And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them, man. You're dealing with a power. Why you think in Matthews 10 and 28? It said, be not scared of a man who can kill the body and afterwards can't do nothing else, but fear him who can kill the body and soul in hell. And what is hell? That fire that we just read. Not the underground fire, the fire that's going to be on earth. Lighting your ass up. Take that. Take that mark if you want to, because I'll look at it like this. I'm going to end it because I told, I just want to speak brief on it. It was written way before this about to come to pass, right? So that's telling you right there that the most high is true. And every word that he say is going to come to pass. So that means, how can you be scared? Or why would you take the chip when... Your enemy is giving it to you first off. At any time, he could turn off your chip. Why would you want to be susceptible to a mortal man? Like, ask yourself that. You want to be susceptible to a mortal man? You want to have a regular man who could just go to sleep and not wake up to be your God. And then you're dealing with the wicked at, on top of that. So you want the wicked to be in control of you, man? Take that mark, man, if you want to. Stupid. You stupid, man. So if you got to take death, take death. See, the thing is, this is how grace and merciful Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is. And I'm not about to get all these scriptures. I'm going to quote them. You know? So he's saying that the, the, the ones that die in Yahweh Shai is going to be rose first. That's in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17. Then in 2 Ezra 2.40 to like to the end, to like 2.40 to about the uh, 2 Ezra, uh, second chapter of first 40 through like 48, talks about how he's gonna give you a crown of life, man. Then when you go to John 15 and 13 talk about how there's no greater love than those who die for his friends because he called us his friends because he gave us his secrets. The same way that he died on the cross for your wicked ass, the same way that you had to make your body a living sacrifice. Now, when you go to Matthew 16 and 28, it say that some of us ain't going to taste death. Okay, but if you have to take death, man, you're going to rise up first in glory. 
You're going to get that crown first for everybody else because it said that they're going to be raised up first and then the rest is going to be caught up. All right. So that already show you something. So at the end of the day, you're dealing with a power who created life and death. So that's why death ain't nothing to him because he could rise you up again. We in this mortal flesh, so we thinks about, damn, I don't want to die. Damn, it might hurt. Man, it's going to be for a moment, and then you're going to rise up into everlasting life. So always depend on your Yahweh Shemi Shai. Fuck it. The Bible said they love their life not unto death, man. Because when you look at it, why would you want to stay in a place where it's about to be destroyed? But this video is longer than I intended it to be. But hopefully this video is edifying. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom.